Um, we're going to start with a little lesson on foreshortening and perspective. We'll just start with foreshortening first. Um, and I'm going to show you an example of it. I'd give you a definition, but it's really hard to define it. It's easier to kind of see examples of it. Um, so here's one very, very famous example. I actually learned about this one when I was in college. And um, here's another example. So basically what we have is um, kind of a shortened perspective on an object, or in these two cases, a person, where we don't really see their whole body or figure straight on standing in front of us. We see them at an interesting angle, and it kind of looks like it shortens their body. Um, so Jesus here almost appears like his body is out of proportion, just simply from the angle that they painted this from. Okay. Um, so, um, now foreshortening can seem awkward and it definitely feels awkward as you're drawing and that's for a reason. So, um, what we need to talk about is this idea of foreground, middle ground, and background. And you're used to, in art for you're used to these you should be used to these um, vocabulary words already. Foreground is what's closest to us in a picture. Background is furthest away. And middle ground is somewhere kind of in between. Now, we're used to seeing this kind of foreground, middle ground, background in real life and in pictures as well. And um, it's really dealing with space. So um, we're used to kind of the space of and the depth of what's happening here, where we have something in the foreground that's a little closer, and then like yards and yards or even miles away is what's in the middle ground. And then way far back, like again, yards and yards and or miles away is the background. Um, the reason why um, foreshortening is so um, is so awkward is because um, usually from foreground to background, we have miles of space and distance. Um, but in foreshortening, we have, we, we kind of get rid of that. Um, so we have a very, very quick foreground to background. And I think this is like a wine opener, um, which is a small object. It's only a few inches long, but we have that strangeness here because we have something so upfront and in our face and so large, and we see how it quickly pushes from the foreground way into the background. And it doesn't give much space for that, um, for that middle ground. So we have something going from really big to really teeny, with, and it, it's in a very shortened um, amount of space. So that should make sense to the word foreshortening. Our, our space from foreground to background is really shortened quickly. And here's another example, okay? So again, we have something in our face right here, foreground, and then this is a person's body. They're, you know, people are only about like five to six feet tall usually. So we cramp that space really quickly from foreground here into the background. And again, not give a lot of room for, for middle ground. And usually we do do that. As you see here in this drawing, you know, we have foreground here and then middle ground and background. And we give ourselves enough time and space so that things can get smaller um, very uh, subtly and slowly. But with foreshortening, we really jam a lot of stuff into um, a very small amount of space and go foreground to background really, really quickly and kind of strangely and awkwardly. But it creates really cool art uh, when you draw something from a different perspective that foreshortens it. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and we'll see with our next video how to achieve that.